All right, so if we look at the graph of sample data here, what was on the vertical axis? What should I label this with? The acceleration, and it was measured in meters per second squared. And what did we put here? The force. And it was measured in newtons. And it wasn't just the force. It was all or the sum of the forces acting on the object because it was the only force acting on the object down the incline. So it was the total force acting on it. So that's sig sigma means total. Okay, so then this y equals 1.293x minus 0 0.12. Okay, so what would you expect the force to be if... Um, if it was on a flat surface. Zero, so we should probably, this right here should probably be close to zero. And it's pretty close to zero, 0 0.1, okay? So then we have a, an equation left over that's y equals 1.293x. Well, what was on our y-axis? The acceleration. And what is on our x-axis? The force. Now, if I rewrite that equation, F equals, so it's F equals, it would be what? A over 1.29? Or the sum of the forces? I left off my sigma. Sorry. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let's, what what is 1 over 1.29? What, what is that in a calculator? 0.7, 0.7. Point seven seven five a. Do, does anybody remember the mass of the object yesterday that you had rolling down? Let's see, the cart was 250, 250 grams, and then you had two of the bars on there, and the bars were 250 each. So what was our total mass? 750 grams. How many kilograms is that? 0.750 kilograms. What, what, what does that kind of look like? The Not the acceleration, but the coefficient that's in front, right? So that's pretty close. And, and I'm saying that your cart was 250 because that's what it's supposed to be, but it could be plus or minus a little bit. All those little carts are supposed to be 250 grams. We didn't actually mass it. That was like the ideal mass, so maybe it is a little bit more because we didn't mass it. So what what could I substitute as 0 0.775? Mass. So the sum of the forces is equal to ma. That is Newton's second law. When an unbalanced force acts on an object, it will accelerate. And it will accelerate at a rate that depends on its mass. Okay? And the force. Bigger force on the same mass, you're going to get better, bigger acceleration. You keep the same force and you change the mass, you're going to get smaller accelerations. Increase the mass, you'll get smaller accelerations. Decrease the mass, you'll get bigger accelerations. Okay? And what was, let's just review, what was Newton's um, first law? The sum of the forces equals zero. So, and what was the acceleration of an object if it was obeying Newton's first law? Zero. So look, if you substitute a zero in for this A, you get the sum of the forces equals zero. So really, all you need is the second uh, law there. It covers the first one. The acceleration is zero, then when you sum the forces, you're going to get zero. I like equations rather than words, so this is your Newton's first law right here. And that's your Newton's second law. And that's all there is to those guys. I know there's some written words about it and some fancy text in your book, but that's what it means. And you've experimented with it.